Today, November 17th, 2020, at the time of this recording, I think certainly will go down as a very bittersweet day in the history of the Chicago Cubs organization, and I think especially for Chicago Cubs fans. Whereas we might have expected this was going to be a reality at some point, an eventuality that maybe it was going to happen another year from now. Um, I don't know that any of us are truly caught that off guard or that blindsided by the news that Theo Epstein has officially stepped down as president of the Chicago Cubs, um, a role that he's held with the organization since late 2011. It, it is certainly a kind of bittersweet day. Like, it's very easy to come on here, and I'm just speaking from my own perspective, and talk about decisions that executives make in the different sports and praise some, certainly criticize some. And when you're a Chicago sports fan, you tend to have a lot to criticize. So it's easy to pounce on those things because they come at you left and right all over the place. But too often, I don't think we focus enough on the positives and the good things that certain individuals uh, represent. And maybe in part that's because uh, those folks don't always have that much positive to talk about. Like I look at Jerry Krause, and I certainly have taken my shots at him over the years and feel justified in all of them. But at the same point in time, you know, this was a guy that was a general manager of a team that won six championships in the 90s. And sometimes the old thought process of, well, he wouldn't have won any without Michael Jordan. Well, Michael Jordan wouldn't have won any championships without Jerry Krause acquiring Scottie Pippen and Horace Grant in the same draft in 87. You know, without trading Charles Oakley for Bill Cartwright, a lot of general managers wouldn't have done that. He was the one that signed a young, mustached John Paxson way back in the day and stayed patient with him over the years as he developed into a reliable spot-up shooter for Jordan in that Bulls triangle offense. He's the one that fired Doug Collins after they had made their first trip to the Eastern Conference Finals uh, in the Jordan era in 89 and promoted Phil Jackson of all people. Like, for all the things that we can criticize Cross Ford again, certainly merited and justified, uh, it is easy to overlook the good things that he did. You know, the people say, well, anybody would have traded Will Purdue for Dennis Rodman. Yeah, but Jerry Cross is the one that did that. You know what I mean? And I look at Theo and, you know, maybe the, the last couple of years haven't went the way uh, that we had hoped as Cubs fans. I can certainly say that's the case. Uh, but if anything, that's us kind of getting a little spoiled. And in a lot of ways, realistically, we have Theo Epstein to thank for that. Like, I always felt the most pivotally important player in the history of the Cubs organization is Sammy Sosa on a variety of different levels. One of the things that Sammy Sosa brought to the table was that eventually got to a point in time where they couldn't waste his career as an organization like they had done with Ernie Banks, like they had done with Ron Santo, like they had done with Ryan Sandberg. So they had to go out there, the Tribune Com Corporation at the time, the ownership of, for the Cubs, and go out and make a big splashy hire for their manager. And if you remember in that fall of 2002, before the 2003 season, they bring in Dusty Baker, who at the time had just come off of a World Series appearance with that veteran Giants team. They had guys like Barry Bonds and Jeff Kent, etc. Like, that was a big deal at the time. I always felt like that was in large part due to Sammy Sosa. Sammy Sosa forced the Tribune Corporation to have expectations. And by hiring Dusty Baker, it represented a fundamental changing of the guard in that there were going to be some expectations. The lovable losers thing was not going to truly be as acceptable as it felt like it had been for many years. Like this was a team, an organization, at least on the surface, gave somewhat of a damn about winning. Well, when it became very evident that Jim Hendry had run this thing into the ground and you were getting into 2011, like I was screaming it at the time, I know, um, that this team needed a total, full, and complete rebuild. Top down, bottom up, bottom this thing out, completely start over, no more stupid contracts for guys like Alfonso Soriano and the like, etc. It is time to gut the damn thing. 
and never in my wildest dreams could I have imagined that this organization would have went out there in late 2011 and brought in Theo Epstein. Like This is a guy that ended the curse of the Bambino in a lot of ways in Boston. This is a guy that built multiple World Series championship teams in Boston. And the fact that this was still a relatively young guy, so certainly not past his prime as an executive, that the Chicago Cubs are going to bring him in as a team president and say, fix this. It's your show. Do it the way you want to do it. You have the power to do so. You've got time. We believe in you. Go do it. You know, that was a really pivotal day again in the history of the organization. Because when you think about the Cubs, it's like, okay, they suck. They're going to suck for a couple of years. But can we get through the first two to three years, like 2012, 2013, 2014, as this team kind of remakes itself, as they build up the farm system, as we start getting into 2015? Is that where we start to see the Cubs be a contender? Is that worth the wait? And I think all Cubs fans could 100,000% agree it absolutely was. And when you think about Theo, like, I don't think it is recency bias or an over-dramatization to say that he is easily one of the most significant figures in Chicago sports history. He ended the Billy Goat curse. Not him personally, individually, but it all started with him. If there's no Theo Epstein, there's no Jed Hoyer. If there's no those two guys, the farm system doesn't get rebuilt. This team doesn't do some of the things that they do, and they don't go on to eventually win the World Series in the 2016 season. The reason that I have this shirt today is because it all started with Theo. And when you think about it, like, there are other very cer certainly significant figures in Chicago sports history. The Michael Jordans of the world, the George S. Hallises of the world, the Walter Paytons of the world. Some are significant for different reasons, such as Jerry Reinsdorf, etc. But when you think about those truly significant all-time folks in the scope of Chicago sports history, Theo was at the very top of that list because he came in and everything changed with this Cubs organization. Even if the results didn't immediately pan out, you knew someday they were going to, and when they did, they were going to do it in a big way. This wasn't your mom or dad's Chicago Cubs. This wasn't your grandparents' Chicago Cubs. This wasn't your great-grandparents' Chicago Cubs. Hell, this wasn't even your great-great-grandparents' Chicago Cubs. Like, this was going to be different. And you look at it, like the real genius I always thought about the Epstein hire was the, the Cubs knew as an organization that they were really bad and they were tired of paying out big contracts from middling to below average performance. Why do that? And I can't blame them. Whether it's the Tribune Corporation or the Ricketts family, like that crap gets old after a while. So you're also staring down the barrel of, you haven't won shit all those years that you played at Whit Wrigley Field when you talk about World Series. Um, so either get rid of that dump of a stadium or you have to really pour some money into it. And I always thought the genius behind the Theo Epstein hire was, you paid him $18.5 million for that first five-year run for as part of the five-year plan, which allowed you to save the $200, $300 million in payroll during that time that you could use to plunk into the stadium. Like Theo bought you time. Theo bought you the ability to get Wrigley renovated. Theo allowed you to save money in other places. Theo helped rebuild the farm system. Like there are so many things that you can point to, you know, that, that it all goes back to Theo. And it all starts with Theo. And when you talk about baseball people and baseball Hall of Famers, like this guy is the curse killer. He will forever be known as the curse killer. He helped kill the curse of the Bambino and he helped kill the curse of the Billy Goat. Someday Theo Epstein will have a bust in Cooperstown. And there is nobody with a rational mind that can argue against that. Absolutely none. He's got the championships and the organizational change uh, to prove it. So while I could sit there and talk about over the past few years some of the questionable free agent signings that he made, such as the Jason Hayward deal, you know, the trading away guys like Eloy Jimenez as part of a package to get Quintana, and that didn't really work out. You know, giving up Glover Torres to 
acquire Araldus Chapman for a few months and all that went with that. But at the end of the day, it worked out. It helped contribute to a World Series. So you kind of deal with it. Um, you know, there are other things like you started to see the lack of young impact pitching coming up through the system. You know, you see like the disappointments and the lack of progression in first round picks like Kyle Schwarber and Albert Almora and so forth. Like I can go on and on with a lot of that stuff. But the reality is like, the whole perspective of being a Cubs fan is different now. The whole mindset of being a Cubs fan is different now. And that's because of Theo. Now, there were a lot of painful years as a Cubs fan. I've experienced more of them than quite a number of you that are watching this. And there are others of you that are watching this that experienced many more than me. We all know that feeling of bad. We all know that feeling of, hey, it's a party at Wrigley. Harry's hanging out of the booth drunk. It's the ball day. Like selling the environment, selling the experience, and not selling consistent winning baseball. Now, as Cub fans, we have some type of expectations for consistent winning baseball. To me, it all started with Sammy Sosa and eventually Dusty Baker being hired, but it really picked up steam at a whole different level when it came to the hiring of Theo Epstein. And you look back now at his nine years, you know, the playoff appearances, obviously the World Series championship, like, I have nothing to say to Theo, but thank you. I had, a couple of years ago, said, you know, one of the last remaining things that I want to see before I die is the Chicago Cubs finally win a World Series. That happened. Again, as a sports fan, uh, we take these things too seriously sometimes because we love our teams and we get so emotionally connected and invested in them. Like we become irrational and ridiculous when it comes to them. There's no question about that. And I certainly do as well. Like, just follow me on Twitter. That's all you need to know about that. But, you know, one of the things that I wanted to have happen before I died was to see the Cubs win a World Series. And that happened. And that is in no small part, and really in large part due to Theo. Poor Jet Hoyer, by the way. Like, everybody just forgets about that poor guy, and everybody just assumes he has nothing to do with it. But he certainly did, and now he's going to step up into Theo Epstein's uh, role there as team president. But, you know, who knows what the future holds? You're going to see a lot of changes coming in this organization in the next year or two in terms of the roster, in terms of construction. It's needed and it's time. You know, am I disappointed that they didn't get more than one World Series trophy out of all of it? Yeah, absolutely. Does it feel like a kind of quintessential Chicago thing to take all that time to be able to finally win a championship? And then that's the only one they win, like the 85 Bears, the 2005 White Sox, the 2016 Cubs. Yeah, that feels, you know, perfectly Chicago in its own way. It really, really does. But nobody can ever take it away. Nobody can ever change what happened. Because it happened. And thank God it did. Sorry Cleveland fans, but hopefully you'll get your moment someday. But 2016 was our time to shine. Um, so whatever Theo does next, wherever he goes next, you know, I wish him nothing but the best and success. Because I feel like I owe a lot to him. And I'm very, very thankful that he was ever brought into the fold. I'm very thankful that he was given the opportunity to do things the right way, you know, and that he had a vision, had a goal, and he stuck to it, didn't panic, you know, was patient, and it ultimately paid off. And while we all would have liked to have seen it pay off even more, just think about the fact that you can say in your lifetime you actually saw the Cubs win a World Series. And that is something that nobody can ever, 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 ever take away from you. So thank you, Theo Epstein. Thank you for the memories and thank you all that you did. And thank you for giving all of us Cub fans something that we can cherish for the rest of our lives. I salute you, sir.